guys, welcome. Today we're going to make this scene from Dunkirk, completely free in Blender and DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's get started and jump in. You'll notice for the Spitfire model here, I'm not showing you how it got from the cube to this state. Now, that may or may not be because I forgot to record that part, but in any case, I started by grabbing two reference photos of a Spitfire and placing them in my scene and then got a cube and modeled the basic shapes of the Spitfire. Once more geometry was needed, I added in a subsurf modifier and some carefully placed loop cuts to make those curved edges on the jet. For the cockpit, I used a sphere that I then edited with proportional editing. I then got some cylinders and extruded out one of their faces to make some simple landing gear. For the ground, I used two planes with the one in the background being curved, which I did with proportional editing. The Spitfire looks great, but the one in the reference has seen better days, so I need to destroy all my hard work and make it look like it's been tossed in a blender. No pun intended. So I went into sculpt mode and used the clay strips brush set to subtract mode to make the Spitfire seem destroyed. I used the brush to deform it into looking like the one in the reference. I also used the pivot brush to bend some parts of the plane in more awkward directions whilst keeping the geometry looking fairly similar. To make Farrier, I didn't want to spend loads of time modeling him, so I decided I'd use PIF UHD to make a 3D model of him from an image. However, the image has to have a transparent background, so I used the free photo editor tool called GIMP, yeah, that's what it's called, to rub out the background, and then made that transparent by using the color to alpha option. I then uploaded the image to PIF UHD, and ran through the steps to generate a 3D model, and then I downloaded that. The model came out great, I barely had to tweak it. So, then I added some hair to Farrier using a shorter hair length first, and then turning up the hair length for the rest of the hair on top, which I then combed into place. I also used the push tool to form the clumps of hair on the top of his head. For the soldiers in the background, I used a basic soldier model from Mixamo and attached it to a walking animation. I then animated the start and end positions of the control bone of the soldier and then duplicated him. For each of the duplicates, I offset the keyframes of the control bone so it looks like they're walking in different positions. I also and I scaled down their walk animations to give even more variety. For the sky, I used a HDRI from Polyhaven, which I ran through a mixed RGB node to make it more green, and then used a darker node to make some areas of it more pink. This took longer to figure out than I care to admit, but the point is, it looks semi-decent in the end. For the plane, I just used a simple noise texture for base color, roughness, and normal values, and I turned the metalness to 1. To make this ground as muddy as Walter White's morality, I used the same mud texture I used for my entry in Ponish's Moving Meditations Challenge. Go check that out if you haven't already. It consists of a mix shader mixing a glass shader for the puddles with a shader for the mud. To texture the mud, I used a noise texture plugged into color ramps for the base color and roughness. For the bump and displacement maps, I used a noise texture mixed with black values to control where it would be more flat. Essentially, it's the world's largest collection of nodes for a simple material. To texture Faria, I added a new color attribute node with black base color, and then went into sculpt mode and used the paintbrush to paint in Faria's base colors. I then plugged that into a mix node with a noise texture and set the mix mode to value to give it a bit of randomness to the darkness of Faria's clothing. Since we're using displacement on the ground, I want to use a lot of geometry to make it more effective, but that can slow down the scene quite a bit. So I went into edit mode and selected all the vertices the camera wouldn't see. I then merged those vertices by distance. This helps make the scene easier to move around now. Once again, I had to simulate. This time it wasn't so bad though. For the inflow object, I duplicated the Spitfire and removed the vertices I didn't want to emit fire. I then added in a wind force and turbulence force field. The settings I used were a resolutions division of 198, 128 didn't work for some reason, dissolve of 50 and noise of strength 0.5. All the other settings were left at default. I played around with the field weight settings till I got a decent result. And for the inflow object, I used Fuel 3 and sampling substeps of 10. I rendered out the image sequences EXRs and headed into compositing. 
in DaVinci Resolve, I color corrected the footage by increasing the lift, saturation and contrast. I then added some fill grain to it with strength 0.35. And with that, I give you guys the final result. Thanks for watching guys, if you could like and subscribe that would be great. And if you have any suggestions for any other cinematic scenes I should make, please leave them down in the comments below. Now there you go with the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.